Welcome back to Hello Nigeria and thank you so much for joining us. We're counting down to the end of the second week in January and we hope that you're starting to work towards your goals, your visions and your dreams for 2019. Now one set of people, a group of people that are not sleeping, definitely not sleeping, are Africa's wealthiest people, our billionaires. Now Forbes released the list of Africa's richest on the continent. It's a really long list but this year we had top 20 as opposed to last year where we had top 23. Now this year's list, the, the yearly list is usually aimed at revealing the richest on the continent and basically people who reside in Africa or have their primary businesses in Africa. And the 2019 list was collated using the net worth and the stock exchange value and uh, uh, basically the stock exchange on the fourth close of business on the 4th of January. So that is not a determining factor of how they will fare during the year. That is just what happened. That's just basically for that day. And we know that sometimes during weeks or, you know, months after the result is released, the billionaires on the list could become either richer or poorer. It is dependent on the choices that they make or what the economy says. But um, basically, Esther, how, how, how excited were you when you heard about the list and the fact that there were four Nigerians on the list, three men, one woman, and of the three men, there was one who returned to the list for the first time since 2015. Oh, yes. Um, first of all, I was very impressed with Dangote, even though, yes, I, I felt, uh, I don't blame him. I want to say I felt disappointed, but I don't blame him. Uh, one, Dangote came out as the most richest at $10.3 billion, uh, followed by Mike Adenuga at $9.2 billion. But I would say that I was impressed with Mike because Mike was the third last year. And, you know, there was a huge... 1.6 billion dollar difference you know to his increase in earnings from his business which of course was telecom and oil from last year 2017 till this year unlike mike adenuga who had a dip from 12.2 yeah. billion last year to 10.3 billion yeah. last year, this year so we have like 800 million dollars between Mike Adenuga and um, Dangote. Yes, but congratulations actually. to them at the end of the day. Uh, as much as it might not be the result, the desired result that uh, Dangote wants, you know, we're still seeing that he's done a great job as well. I mean, he's come out tops for eight consecutive years. He's topped the list of Africa's wealthiest businessmen or Africa's wealthiest on the continent. We'll be looking at the list and we'll be starting from number one. We have Aliko Dangote with $10.3 billion. And we also have closely followed by Mike Adenuga. $9.2 billion. Number three on the list is Nikki Oppenheimer, $7.3 billion. Now, Nikki was on the list last year, but for number two. Yeah, but this there was year, an action between him and Mike. Exactly. So this year, he's come come down to number three with $7.3 billion, and he deals primarily in diamonds. diamonds. We also have Nasef Sawiris, who is... Um, Eight point six point three billion dollars. I beg your pardon. At number four, and he deals in construction and, and chemicals. chemicals. We also have Johan Rupert. Johan Rupert is number five on the list with five point three billion dollars and deals in luxury goods. Number six on the list we have Isad Rebrab, and Isad Rebrab is three point seven billion dollars and deals and deals in food. He's is actually the most interesting for me. Food. Like, yeah, but no, but again, everybody kept talking about it. Yes. Food and nothing else actually. His brand has actually been known all over the African uh, Arab countries for food. And they own chains of food businesses and they've done well for years. Yes. So but what that shows us is at the end of the day, no matter how things get, people will always eat. Even in Nigeria, if we look at our businesses in Nigeria, there's one business that never really does too badly and that is the food business. Yeah. You know, people will always eat no matter how things get. Once they get money, one of the primary things you want to do is to feed. Food. All right, we have number eight on the uh, number seven on the list. Nagwib Sawiris. Nagwib Sawiris is worth two point nine billion dollars, and Nagwib deals with t deals telecom. with telecom. Number eight on the list, we have Kuz Becker, deals in media and investment, and is worth two point three billion dollars. Yeah, that's Kuz Becker on the screen there. And now we have. Um, number eight. No, there there's actually a tie. three people. There's a tie in number eight. So we have Kuzbeka, Isabel Dos Santos, Santos Mohamed Mansour, Mansour, and Strive Masihira. Yes. Now, Four it's important actually. to mention that there are only two women that made it to the list this year. And Isabel Dos Santos is, of course, one of the two women. And she's also the daughter of the former president of um, Angola, Edward. Yes. Um, Yes, Dos Santos. I forgot his name, Eduardo Dos Santos. Yes, you're Juan, correct. 
Yes, exactly. So she's a former um, president's daughter, and she deals basically in investments as well. She's earning, or she she's worth two point three billion dollars, as well as Mohammed Mansour and Kuzbeka and Strive Masira. Now Strive made it to the list last year for the first time. So Zimbabwe saw them saw him on the list for the first time last year, and of course it's come back again this year. And he's done really well for himself in the past year. He's one of the people whose earnings did not dip in the past year. <laughs> we also have Patricia. Patrice Bosepi, who is um, into mining, $2.3 billion as well. So these are the people that rank on number eight. Or top eight, actually. Exactly. So they are, they are all in the number eight rank together. <laughs> so from there, we jump over to number 13. And we have Aziz Akanush. Aziz Akanush is worth $2.1 billion and deals in petroleum as well as is diversified. Yeah. And I particularly like this one. I find him very interesting. Um, Mohamed Duji, he earns his $1.9 billion. And why I find him interesting is because he's the youngest on the list. He was yeah. also the youngest on the list last year. So at the time, he was the youngest on the list last year. He was 42. And this year, he's 43, still maintaining the youngest on the list. So my first really need to up our game <laughs> and go and really kick some people out of office. I think the most interesting thing for Mohamed for me is the term used. Diversified, diversified yeah. meaning he's an investor in all, you know, sectors, and he's doing a lot. Now, he's not just one place. Yes, we've always known for Dangote being the richest of them all. We've known three things for Dangote. It's always been sugar, cement, and flour. That's what it's always been. The same thing for Mike Adenuga. It's always been telecom and, and oil. oil. Exactly. So there's nothing else added. These are, even though we know these people have other things they do, but these are the three major things known to actually give them, you know, profit. So basically, there, there are a lot of people. There, there are still more people who are, you know, are diversified as well on the mm. list, on the top 20 mm -hmm. list. So maybe we'll move to the next person, Othman Benjelun. I hope I got that correctly. Yes. $1.7 <laughs> million. Now, I find him interesting as well because he's the oldest person on the list and he's 86 years old. He wasn't the wow. oldest person on the list last year. We had someone from, if I'm correct, Egypt. If I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's Egypt. Right, uh, followed right after, after that, we have Abdul Samad Rabiu. He deals in cement and sugar. He's number 16 on the list and he's worth $1.6 billion dollars and he's nigerian by the way exactly and it's so interesting right now <laughs> because he was on the list before and he wasn't there again so for the first time since 2015 mm. he's resurfacing on the list so kudos to him and congratulations to him on the work that he's doing with his cement and sugar and we have number 17 on the list yasin mansu and yasin mansu is also diversified as yes. well and is worth 1.5 billion dollars number 18 on the list we have yusef mansu $1.2 billion and diversified as well. Now, number 19 on the list, Girl Power, All Hill, Nigeria. Ooh, ooh. We have for Lauren Shalakija, <laughs> $1.1 billion. And of course, we know that she deals in oil. This is definitely our, our hero and our champion. But actually, compared to her, her ranking actually in 2016 and 2017, Truthfully, for Lauren, she, Alakija has actually dropped. Yeah, of because course she, she was occupying the 16th position in 2016 and then 2018, she got to the 19th position. Uh, but basically, I would want to look at the factors that made this happen. Dangote, for example, was earning $25.2 billion in 2015. So there are a lot of things that have happened. Economic effects, recession. We've, we're know. seeing weaker currencies. Yeah. We're seeing, you know, the oil prices as well. So basically, there's so many factors that led to the decline that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. According to a caption I saw on the yeah. Forbes website, they say fewer billionaires, poorer billionaires. How can they call this? How can I, like the oxymoron, poorer billionaires, being a billionaire and using the word poor in the same sentence? I don't really understand. But actually, of course, some, they get the message. Someone was actually talking about how this is showing on, you know, the economy of Africa and African nations, because come on, th there was money circulating as at 2015 and 2016, all around in the different sectors compared to how it is now. So everybody's complaining, and even the billionaires are saying, it's showing on them, come on, who patronizes them? We are the ones. If the billionaires are complaining, then what is happening to the average person? The average <laughs> individual is barely trying to make a living. That's the truth. So basically we feel that this, this decline is felt in every, Everywhere. every area, every sector, oh, every yes. economy. We're seeing that those at the top are complaining, those at the bottom end of the ladder are complaining because we are still fighting the minimum wage battle, you know, and we're saying that beyond them, Approving this, you know, the, the, the fact that are these governors going to pay? We yeah. still have people who are being owed salaries. So there's so much that we're seeing. Africa is a wonderful continent, but we still have a lot of work to do. Now, back to our list, we have our last person on the list, 
Mike Michel Leroux, Leroux banking $1.1 billion and 69 years old. There's so much that we can see and there's so much that we can learn from this list. Of course, these are not the only billionaires in the continent of Africa, but every year the Forbes Africa releases its list and we analyze this list based on those who reside in Africa or have their primary businesses here. And as we mentioned earlier, this net worth was calculated using stock prices and currency exchange rates from the close of business on the 4th of January. Yeah. So this is not a guarantee that for the rest of the year, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to be a prophet of doom, but this is not a guarantee that their finances will remain this way throughout the year. It could either increase, it could reduce, or it could stay the same. And reports have it that the, the finances of these billionaires, their net worth either increases or reduces within days or weeks of True. the announcement. True. Right. True. Because there were names that were here last year that are not there this year. So between last year and this year, there's been a major drop. So there was a tie between South Africa and Egypt. Mm. Last year, they had six, you know, six billionaires from South Africa and mm. six billionaires from Egypt. But this year, we have five from South Africa, five from Egypt, four from Nigeria. Then we, I think we have two from Morocco, then one from Algeria, yes. Angola, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe, one, yeah. one, one each. Yeah. So there's so much to, to see and so much to learn. And for those of us who hope that before we die, we'll be billionaires, we will go and read this list. <laughs> we will write it and put it on our vision board. And we will understand, you know, what, what these people did. These are basic role models that people should have, young yeah. people should have, young entrepreneurs, businessmen, SMEs. You know, these are the people you should look up to. When I was talking to my father about this list this morning, my dad said, these are the men who don't sleep. Exactly. <laughs> While you are sleeping. And I looked at him like, it's like, yeah, they don't sleep. People think people that when you have a lot of money, you know, you are balling, you are living the good life. But the truth is that the richer you are, the more t the more work you might have yes. to put. Maybe I'm not a rich person. I'm not that much of a rich person yet, so I don't know. But from the ones that I have seen, they work so hard. And we have that those who have less money are the ones that are, they you know, feeling entitled. Time. And you have time to be turning up and, you know. Oh, that Lord. is not to say that you should not rest. Please, whatever you do, make our time to rest. We understand the importance of rest and going on, leave, going on leave, going on the vacation to relax refresh and rejuvenate so congratulations to our billionaires cheers to having more younger people on that list in 2020 and if you're going to be one of them say amen amen, amen. <laughs> to enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page you go love her